Okay, the time is upon us. Lesson five, pronunciation. So you may have been butchering some of the words. I may have too. So now we're going to start to um, really understand how to pronounce certain words, syllables, letters, and a lot of the unique letters that are found in Portuguese and not in English or another language you may be familiar with. So without further ado, let's get to it. Probably the most common you'll find in Portuguese is this AO with the little tilde over the A. Okay, and that makes it sound like this. Oh, oh. So let's give an example. Camarão. That is actually shrimp, right? So, camarão. The A with the tilde on the top and the O. 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 It's a nasal sound. It's, it's very difficult to, to learn this and to pick this up. Um, it just takes a lot of time. O. That is essential. I'll give you another example. Something like cone, which is a word for a dog. There are several words for dogs. This is one of them. Cone. Cone. Camarão. Camarão. Okay. The other one is the A with the tilde. Okay. So that makes it sound like this. Irma. Irma. So once again, it's a nasal sound. Irma. Irma. So with the A, O, camarão, and with just the A, uh, O, uh, camarão, irmã. Definitely takes time to learn. That is one of the more important ones you'll hear. Then we have this C with a little squiggly on it. And that gives you an S sound, right? So for a word like moça, means like lady, right? Young girl, lady. Moça. So just imagine that it's the S, more or less, moça. Now if you have a word with an S in between two vowels, like casa, it's actually a Z sound. Casa. Casa. Okay. So whenever you see the C, sedia, with, with the little squiggly, that is an S sound. Mosa. Mosa. If you see an S in between two vowels like this in the house, casa. 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 Another extremely important sound is this DE or the DI sound. Okay. So in one of the previous lessons we learned the word onji, right, which means where. Okay. So it looks like it would be said ondi. Ondi. Now in some regions you may hear people say something like ondi. But for the majority of people, and pretty much everywhere, you will just hear onji, onji, right? and that is the most common way of saying it. So if you have a de at the end of the word, it's a g sound, onji, onji, onji. Now, if you have a sound like on G, the DE, what is the DI sound going to sound like? So if you look at a word like this, and then G, you'll more or less have the same sound, more or less. And then G, which translates to, I understood. Entenji. Onji. Entenji. 
There's one other situation where you have a word that has the di in the beginning, like this word, gifisu. It's difficult. That is also a G sound, but in the beginning of the word, Gifisu, Gifisu, Gifisu. Okay, so in most cases the DE or the DI sound will actually be something like a G. Now, these, the TE and the TI, also give a sound that doesn't actually look like how it's spelled. So if you have a word like this, tomachi, tomato, it's not tomati, it's tomachi. So the TE sound, the TI is actually a chi, chi. Tomachi. Tomachi. Okay. And that goes for a word with a TI also. Okay. Um, have a word like Kamorochi, which is like the reserved or the VIP room at like a club or a restaurant. Camarochi, Camarochi. Okay. Now we have some sounds that are definitely going to be a little bit difficult. So the first one is this LH. Okay. So it sounds like this Abelia. Abelia. And even me, I've been speaking Portuguese for a number of years, sometimes I do mispronounce this or I have trouble with it. So the L and the H actually sort of combine to make a very strange sound. Abelia. Abelia. You sort of feel it in your throat sometimes, but it just takes practice. But whatever you do, it's not Abelha. Abelia. The L and the H sort of combine. Abelia. When you have something like the NH, okay, let's do something like this. Okay, the NH is very similar to the N with the tilde in Spanish, right? If you're familiar with that. So in this case, Nino, which means nest, like a bird's nest, for example, it's Nino. Nino. Sort of feel the N and the H together. It's very nasal, also. Nino. 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 Something like this. Nino. 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 And then the double R sound is possibly my favorite sound in Portuguese. So, for example, in Spanish, a double R would be, you'd be rolling the R. Carro. Something like that. Portuguese, it's actually a H sound. All right, so for example, to say the car, it's not carro, it's cajo. Cajo. The double R becomes an H, more or less. Cajo. 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 In Portuguese, an X will give you a like a CH sound, more or less, right? So something like that. So there's not many words I can think of, but one would be this. Shingar. Right? That means to swear at or to to just you know to cuss at, to say a bad word, right? 
the ridicule, something along those lines. So the X is like a CH, Shingar, Shingar, Shingar. And there also is a CH sound in Portuguese. If you have the C and the H together, Chato, chato, shingar, chato. Now, chato is an inter interesting word because it means so many different things. It could mean rude, it could mean annoying, it can even mean boring. So, if someone says ah, you're chato, to me as an American, it, it could be a very, could be various things that you're talking about. Uh, but most of the time, it's something like rude or annoying. Right? So the person is chato. Uh, he's, He's, he's not that nice of a person to be around, you know, in general. Then we have the H sound, which is pretty simple because there really is none. So if you say something like "ora," which is um, hour, what kind of clock, "ora," you really don't say the H at all. "Ora," "ora." Okay. If you'll notice, I'm not saying ora, ora, ora. So that brings me to the next sound, the R, which is like a sort of like a flip of the tongue. Ora, ora, ra, 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 ora. Just by itself. Ora, ra, ora. A little flip of the tongue. Um. And that pretty much goes for all words when you have an R in, inside the word. So, for example, there's a very beautiful town in Brazil called Araraquara. When I first had went there, everybody was saying Araraquara, which is not correct, because as I just mentioned, the, the R, it's like a little flip of the tongue. So it's Araraquara, ra, ra. Arara quara. Ora. Very, very different thing happens when you have an R in the beginning of a word. So if you have a word like this, rat. It is not rato. It is not rato. So when you have the R in the beginning of the word, it's a different sound. And most of Brazil, most of Brazil, it will be a H sound. So it actually hato. Hato. So when you have an R in the beginning of a word, it is more or less an H sound. Hato. Hato. Now, like I said, if you have the R in the middle of the word, it will be the flick of the tongue, the araraquara. Arara. There are some instances when the R at the beginning of the word will actually be the R sound, but that's really just based on your geography. So in Rio, some people actually say Rio. Um, but in general, most of Brazil, you would just say Rio, right? Imagine there's an H there. Rio. Rio. Right. So very few people actually say um, are pronounced the R's in the beginning of a word as an actual R. Rio, uh, some parts of northern Brazil may, but in general, I mean, if you if you just pronounce it as an as an H, everybody will understand without a problem, because that is how the majority of people do it. Okay, so this brings me to um, this little uh, suffix that we have. So this is very common. You'll see this a lot. In Portuguese, so it's this e i r a era era. So you'll see in a word like this, you can also have o, on that, right? Banheira, which means like the bath, for example, right? You can also have banheiro, which means bathroom. Okay, so here we also have the n h that we previously discussed. So banheira, yeah. Yeah, banheira, 
Banyera. Banyera. An era sound. Or banyeru. 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 Okay. Now, one other thing I want to mention, but I don't want it to be sort of a, a focus for, for this course, um, is that sometimes, or actually, majority of the time, if you have an O at the end of a word, right, it is not necessarily pronounced like an O in English. So if you have a word, use some basic got. Nobody says gato, gato. The, when you have an O at the end of a word, it sort of trails off and becomes, becomes something like a U, a U sound. There's, now, if you just listen, you may understand, but I don't want this to be a focus because it isn't very, very important. So, let me say, I'll say it a couple times as it looks like it's pronounced, and then I'll say it a couple times as it actually is. Gato. Gato. That is not how it's pronounced. It would be pronounced like this. Gato. 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 So if you did notice a difference, that's good. If not, you should be fine. Um, but definitely, I just wanted to point that out because um, it is something that um, is apparent when you're speaking Brazilian Portuguese. Okay, But don't worry too much about that. And then we get to one of the more interesting aspects of Portuguese. Uh, and this is common in other languages too, um, but it really is not something you find in English, is when you have these diminutive forms. Or also these, on the contrary, larger forms, right? So, so you may hear something like this. Right? Something that has an I-N-H-O or I-N-H-A ending. That means little, right? Diminutive. So. If you have something like gachinho, remember the ch, 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 ch on the chi, right? Gachinho. We previously talked about that. It's not gatinho. It's gachinho. So what would that be? So a, a gato is a cat, right? So then that would be a little cat or a kitten. Right, gachinho. Okay, the diminutive ending. Same thing for um, let's look at this. I N H A ending. If you see that, there's a trigger right there. It lets you know it's diminutive form. Right. So irmazinho. So if you remember, Irma is a sister. So irmazinho would be little sister. Right, little sister. So these little, okay. Um, and Brazilians love using that, even even as like a nickname, right? So you know, you, someone may call you that, you know, it's call you a name with a diminutive ending, but it's not necessarily that you were small or or whatever. It's just that it's a, it's a funny, a cute way of, of of a nickname, right? Um, so we also have. Uh, the um, larger form, I guess, would be the contrary of diminutive. So it would really be something with a AO and then, right? So yeah, just, I'll just use the same example again. I like cats. So gato, if you have gato is cat, gachinho is little cat, gato. Just be a big cat. Alright, so like I said, I N H A ending, Inya, Inyo ending. It's a trigger right there, means little. If you, in most cases, if you have the A O ending, it's a trigger right there that says bigger. Bigger. Okay. Um, now, if you remember the very first slide, I mentioned the word for uh, shrimp is camarão. That AO ending is not indicative of a large shrimp. That's just how the word is. But in, in pretty much every other case, if you see an AO ending, you, you should immediately think big. I'll give you another example. 
So you have a car, cajo, right? So you may have something like this. A cajon. A big car or a luxurious or expensive car. Cajon. Okay? So those are definitely, definitely important. Um, so you'll, you may also come across something like, um, like this for the, the pronunciation, Z-A-O, zone. So that is also a trigger um, for the bigger form, right? Um, so if you do want to learn Portuguese as, uh, as completely as possible, definitely something like um, these diminutive forms would definitely come in handy because people do use those all the time, absolutely all the time, um, for nicknames, for descriptions. Um, yeah, here's another example. Um, something like this. Okay, so casa is house, right? So casino would be little house, like a quaint little house. That's it. Now, to going back to the other thing we talked about, we have an S in between two vowels. It's like a Z, right? So it's not casinha, it's casinha. Casinha. Eu quero uma casinha. I want a little house. Okay? So in terms of pronunciation, that more or less covers it. I went through the alphabet and all the different sounds. Um, I don't really think I missed anything, or at least anything that would be uh, applicable to our, our level right now. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it, and now you'll definitely, when you see at least Portuguese written, you'll definitely get to uh, understand some things, I hope. Anyway, thank you.